And now our very own medical expert, Dr. Michael Stratford. What's up today, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Pia, our subject this morning is da -da -da -da, do it yourself, da -da -da, doctoring. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Seriously, Pia. With the rising costs of medical care today, more and more people are turning to self diagnostic kits. The most popular of these being the early pregnancy test. This is the very early pregnancy test which is nothing compared to the modern pregnancy test, Buxed Bunnies. <laughs> oh. Ah, but aren't they complicated, Dr. Mike? Why, not at all, anchor woman Pia. <laughs> Just look at the pregnancy test. All you do is take this treated stick and dip it in a urine sample. If the sample turns blue, you're pregnant. Pink, if you're not. What do you say we give it a try? <laughs> Today's guest sample was donated by a member of our staff who prefers to remain anonymous. So, here we go. You take the treated stick, dip it in the urine sample, swizzle it around, <laughs> and yes, it is turning blue! Congratulations, Miss Anonymous. Whoever you are, you've got another mouth to feed. Pia! Pia, it was a joke. This is apple juice. I was feeling so bad. Ask my friend, my doctor, just what I had. I said, doctor. Doctor, doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a doctor in the house? Yes. No, sorry, I don't want him going near any of my patients. Why? Because he's a butcher, an incompetent butcher at that. Look, I'm telling you, the man is not. Oh! Hold oh. on. Oh, <laughs> not without dinner and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite time of year, flu season. People writhing in pain, spitting up all sorts of stuff you wouldn't believe. Ooh. All of these are... <laughs> <laughs> all, all of these are bronchial? Yeah. Oh, the land is supplied erythromycin. We're going to be sticking them today. Ooh, I love it when you talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look. No, no, look, Bob, I know he's a friend of yours. But hold on. Yo, bro. Abraham, right? Talk about a coffee, Grant. Yeah, Bob. No, 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 man. Tell him to operate on John Tower. He won't need anesthesia. He's big, he's bad, he's, he's beautiful. beautiful, he's Butterfield. <laughs> you cats are so white. <laughs> so what was all that all about? It was about uh, Birmingham, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, they had to pull that guy's license. He's got to be the most arrogant bastard ever picked up a scalp. Oh yeah, that's like the pot calling the kettle bl uh... <laughs> Look, forget about your show. I'm not doing it. What show? That show, that TV show he does. He sees me out in the parking lot. He comes up to me, begs me to come on the show and talk about open heart surgery. Begged? I think the operative phrase here is mentioned it in passing, which you leapt on like a deranged slinky. 
Mike, I mean, why'd you mention it to him and pass on me? I mean, I'm very comfortable with the medium. I've been on television a number of times. That's what? Spectator at the Celtics game? Oh, that's real funny, Grant. You know, hey, yo. Hey, man. I was on the 11 o'clock news a million times when I was working the ER during my residency. And once, as a contestant, with Gail, on Soul Train. Excuse me, where are the bakers? I really wanted a crawler today. Well, gee, I don't know. Whose day was it? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, it's not good enough, Mike. I wanted a crawler. What is it? TV career getting in the way of your medical responsibilities here? I want a crawler. I'll get you a crawler. I want it now. Okay, Linda Blair. <laughs> come on, come on. This is crazy. He's got patients waiting. I want a crawler. What's wrong with you? I'm getting you your crawler. Ah! Forget it. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> Congratulations, Deirdre. A new low. Did Steve finally admit he's married? Huh? <laughs> for what it's worth, Stephen is legally separated. Well, for what it's worth, I think you owe Michael an apology. Oh, really, Dr. Butterfield? Really, Dr. Denny? Well, you'll just have to give him one for me because it's not my strong suit. What is her strong suit? Hmm, a leather and chain ensemble? So, did we kick butt today or what, Doc? As a doctor, I'd like to think we healed some butt today. <laughs> You're a kook, you know that? I'm not the kook, but I do like it in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. What'd you forget, Faye? Deirdre. I got the point. Okay, uh, I owe you an apology. <laughs> when was the last time you apologized to anyone? Hard to say, I know it wasn't during the Reagan years. <laughs> What's the occasion? I was wrong. Look, I'm just going through a rough time right now. Steve's not leaving his wife? Or the other girlfriend, a slut. You mentioned one word to Grant or Abe, you're a dead man. My lips are sutured. Well, anyway, I took all that out on you and I shouldn't have, and I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. So, now that I've buttered you up, could I ask you a little favor? Want me to take Steve's slut off his hands? No, something germ-free. I need you to make a house call for me. Why don't you do it? <laughs> huh. Sorry, I lost my head. No, the, the thing is, is that it's a friend of the family. I wouldn't be comfortable. Okay, what's the problem? He had an accident at work, broke a couple of ribs. Not the first time. Family's worried. And of course, he won't go see a doctor. Uh, okay, what's the address? Okay. Um, the name is Murtaugh. What kind of a name is that? Uh, Irish, I think, and this is the address, okay? okay? Thanks. <clears throat> you kids register your silverware pattern anywhere yet? <laughs> he was doing me a favor. A favor? <laughs> Well, I tell you what, Deirdre, I'd have done that favor for you, and you wouldn't have had to climb the stairs for it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we were making up, Grant. Up? <laughs> Spit it out! What is it? Oh, it's the outfit. You think it works? You like it? Grant, you look like Pat Sajak. <laughs> Really? Well, this is what I, I bought this specially to go on your show. Grant, you're doing a piece on open heart surgery. I don't think that requires a fashion statement. You know what? If this is too much trouble for you, Mike, let's just forget about the whole thing, okay? Fine. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
There is no way I'm letting you off the hook that easy, Stratford. I'm doing your show. Here we go. Why do you have to take blood? I have a broken rib. It's for medical reasons, Dad. No, it isn't. I have a world-class blood collection. I even have some of George Hamilton's blood. He doesn't even know it's missing. You sure he's a doctor? What'd you say? I'm not paranoid. Were you talking about me? So, Bill, want to tell me what happened? If that's your real name, Bill. I tripped, that's all. I suppose that's when the machine caught me there in the ribs. He blacked out, doctor. Nothing of the sort and keep a civil tongue in your head, Peggy. Should we take a vote? It'd really help whether I knew whether it was fainting or tripping. Which was it? Maybe I conked out. Who knows? I know. And it's happened before. Peggy, do something useful. Get me a drink. Is that a good idea, Dad? It's always a good idea to have a drink. Drinking alone is not a good idea. Why don't you have, Doc? No, Bill. I don't drink socially. In fact, the only time I do drink is during delicate surgical procedures. <laughs> I find it steadies me. This is good Irish whiskey, Doc. It'll put hair in your chest. I wonder what would happen if I soaked my head in it. <laughs> I agree with Peg. I don't think you should have a drink right now. All right, then get me a drink for after the doc leaves. Yes, your majesty. Stubborn, just like her mother was. Oh, sounds like her mother was a good woman. She was pretty okay. Okay, spotlight dance. Where were you on the night of the 14th? <laughs> See anything interesting, doc? Have things been getting a little blurry lately? They are now. <laughs> Maybe. Find yourself going to the bathroom a lot? That's my business, doctor. You think Elvis is still alive? <laughs> Gonna have to bring you in for some tests, Bill. What kind of tests? Oh, routine stuff. Pap smear, mammography, <laughs> spelling. Unfortunately, in the spelling bit, you're gonna be going up against some Korean kids. I have to do these tests in a hospital. No way. Dan, it's only for tests. No, damn it, Peg, now stay the hell out of it. Yeah, Peggy! <laughs> Who the hell said you could speak? <laughs> Actually, we can do these tests in my office if you want. Here's my address. Right. You expect me to come here? What's going on? My daughter works here. Is she one of our nurses? One of your doctors. Deirdre? Deirdre. Show the door, Peggy. I know what a door is. <laughs> Saw Bill Murtaugh last night. Oh, so what'd you think? I think the resemblance is striking. He told you, huh? Came out of mid-confrontation. Yeah, that would be my dad. Well, why didn't you say something? Why is he Murtaugh and you Bennett? Well, Murtaugh's my maiden name and Bennett is my... Married name. <clears throat> you were married? Inquiring minds want to know. For about five minutes when I was interning, I married a nurse. Male or female? A little of both, that was a problem. You could have said something. It's complicated, Mike. I didn't want to get into it. Besides, I wanted you to be objective. And if he didn't know that Peg and I had set that up, when it made him nuts. You're three. <laughs> Your father's diabetic. You don't think I know that? Okay, why'd you send me? Because he won't listen to me. Is it something you said? No, it was something I did. When I was in med school, my mother needed a hysterectomy, and I recommended a surgeon. Disaster? That would depend on your view of death. Sorry. So, uh, that's the story. He blames you. <laughs> you still talk? Oh, yeah, we talk. He says things like, uh, Didi, go get me a drink. And I say things like, you know, a man in your condition probably shouldn't be drinking. Then he says things like, get out of my house. And I say, 
You know, if you don't care if you die, maybe I shouldn't either. Well, don't you know fathers are impossible to please? Uh, look at mine and you know how great I am. <laughs> yeah. Mike, I've spent my entire life trying to please that man. I get a full scholarship to college. I find out he doesn't want me going to college. I get accepted to Harvard Medical School. He never says a word. Now I'm a doctor. Is he proud? What else could a man want from a daughter? Someone to get him drinks? He's got Peg for that. Pug? He's got Robert Mitchum to get him drinks? <laughs> Come with me tonight. I, I think he'd listen to you this time. Mike, I think you're forgetting. This is the man who thinks I killed my mother. Well, I guess it's up to me to kill your father. So, uh, what part of Sweden are you from? Uh, the involved with someone part. Oh. How about you? Chicago. The, uh, fooling around with someone who's involved part. <laughs> Kids, I hate to break this up. Well, then don't. Ooh. Uh, this is a commercial break and not happy hour. Oh, Here. can I get this? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right in there. Uh. <laughs> I love this woman. How come you never told me about her? Well, it's only recently that I've realized that you and she are not the same person. <laughs> Dr. Michael Stratford begins a five-part series on the mysteries of the human heart. Today, he reveals some of the secrets of heart surgery with an attractive new guest. <laughs> uh, back to you, Dr. Mike. Thanks, Pia. And joining us this morning is a heart specialist, one of my partners, the attractive Dr. Grant Linowitz. Some people say he's the leading young cardiologist in the Providence area. Hello. How about that bottleneck on I-95 this morning? It was pretty bad, wasn't it? And also, does it feel like a cold front is moving into you? It does to me. Uh, before you get to that tight pennant race in the AL East, maybe we should just jump right in with your opening remarks on open heart surgery now. Fine. If I could just have my torso model. What torso model? <laughs> My torso model. We discussed this, Dr. Stratford. Grant, we discussed your wardrobe. <laughs> okay, well, then I'll just uh, improvise. I'll need a chest. Would you mind removing your blouse? Uh, yes. Ever? <laughs> yeah? Okay, okay, forget about it. Uh, well, uh, you know, they have a saying in show business that the show must go on, right? So let me see what I can do here. Oh. Pia, please. Oh. Thank you so much. Now, uh, after the chest has been shaved and sterilized, obviously mine has not, the initial incision is made right here along the sternum. Pia, if you please draw a dotted line right here, please. Hey, go! My hands are really oh, cold. You're ticklish. Your hands up. I love that in a man. You love that? Oh, yes. Well, try it. Try it again. Try it. Try it. Again. Try it. Just fast and hard. Okay, fast and hard. Oh, oh sorry. That's it. No, no. no. <laughs> Proving once again that laughter is the best medicine and that Grant Linowitz has got a good shot at working at Chippendales. <laughs> well, Bill Murtaugh, it's Doc Savage. Draw! Oh, jeez, it's him again. And how are we feeling today, Wild Bill? <laughs> Seeing double, maybe? I'm feeling great. You got a case of the cutes. <laughs> shade of blue. It's unbelievable. Most people can't get a doctor into their house. I find the only doctor in America you can't get out of your house. Well, Bill, it's obviously going to take a tall doctor with warm hands to get you into the hospital. It's going to take a couple of six-packs, three big Irishmen, and a crane. 
Peg, get the six packs. Sean, Eamon, Patrick, you can come in now. Flippercons are very shy. <laughs> Bill, you've got serious medical problems. Yeah, yeah. Save it, Mike. Is that my conscience? What brings you here, Dee Dee? 86 Porsche with your blood profile. Take to the steering wheel. No, dear drops. Did I leave that lying around? So how am I doing? On a scale of one to two, two being a coma? Not awfully well. Oh, and I haven't made any plans for the wake. You're not invited. You won't let anybody drink. So, Dad, you ready to check out? Is that what you're saying? What do you care? What do you think she's doing here? What is this, a conspiracy? Well, looks that way. You got three people. Or is it six? <laughs> Plotting against your death. Come on, Peg. What do you say we go stuff those leprechauns in an umbrella stand? Why do you have to be so pig-headed? Why can't you face up to your situation? What the hell do you know about my situation? I know that you wake up every morning feeling dizzy and faint. You have blurred vision. You find yourself in the bathroom 10, 11 times a day. You're thirsty all the time. Come 3 o'clock, desperate for a nap. You have shooting pains in your legs. Sometimes your feet go numb and do, please. Let's not leave out the times you get depressed, lash out at people, and then 10 minutes later, he's wondering why. Peg's been talking to you. No, Dad. I just described a normal day in the life of an untreated diabetic. There's no reason why you can't live a normal, healthy life. All we have to do is regulate your diet and determine the proper medication. Now, maybe it's insulin, maybe Oranase. How do you know that stuff will work? Jeez. Because this is what I do. I treat sick people like you, Dad. Except, of course, they're nicer. I'm a doctor. I know you're a doctor, Dee Dee. Well, then why won't you listen to me? What is it? I'm not a man? Don't insult me. Yeah, well, if you won't listen to me as a doctor, the least you could do is listen to me as your daughter. My daughter? You're a little girl who used to live at my house and for a while shared my name. But let's not kid ourselves, Dee Dee. We have nothing in common. So you're still holding it against me because I'm a doctor and not a shop girl. Because I'm somewhere in those 30s. And you don't have grandkids yet? I don't want your grandchildren. They'll probably have big mouths. You know what? You're not going to get any because you're not going to be around. Then why are you yelling at my face? Because I love you. And I don't understand how you could be so stupid you won't take one small step to save your life. Because I'm scared, Dee Dee. I'm scared. Daddy, everybody gets scared. It takes a pretty tough guy to admit it. All right, I admit it. Dee Dee, I'd just <clears throat> rather you wouldn't be my doctor. Fine. We'll get you another doctor. Not him. He's a pest. Thanks, Bill. You've been a dandy patient, too. I'm going to get to the hospital, get things in motion, okay? Dee Dee. Okay. Yeah.